Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. We are comparing the differences between an Amtrak bedroom and an Amtrak roomette. All right, let's jump in because this is one of the questions we get a lot is, should I book a bedroom or a roomette? And it's not as simple as cut and dried as which one. There's a lot of differences and some similarities, so it'll depend on your situation a little bit, which one you want. Let's uh, get the big question right out of the way first, though, because a lot of people think that they should be choosing this based on whether they want to have one person sleep up top and one person on the bottom, and that simply isn't the case. That's exactly right. I think people believe that they can both sleep on the bottom in a bedroom because they're thinking it's like a bedroom, like one big bed on the bottom, but that's not the case. Yeah, we've only <laughs> ever seen one train where that was the case, and that's the Caledonia Sleeper uh, in the UK. <laughs> on Amtrak, if you have a bedroom, you will still be sleeping bunk bed style. So that doesn't really buy you anything extra other than more space in the room and a dedicated bathroom with a door. If you want to have both people sleeping on the bottom, uh, you would be better off purchasing two roomettes and call in and make sure that they're across the hall from each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's go over a little bit what each of them is like. So let's talk about a bedroom on on, a, as, on the sleeper car on Amtrak. So uh, the, the bedroom, as you mentioned, um, first has a full bathroom. So you've got a shower and a commode and a sink all inside your room, right? You do, and you also have a chair that is basically out all day you have that and the couch uh, situation the, the bedroom is going to be about twice the size of a room at so you really do have a lot more space to move around during the day and just get up and stand and and, and stretch so forth whereas in a roomette it, you just don't have room to do that you you can barely stand if the beds are uh, made up you can there's about this much space where you can stand you can possibly change your clothes between the beds and the, and the door but it's pretty tight in there to be able to move around so uh, I think the difference for me comes down to sleeping is not going to be much different the difference comes down to during the day on a room at you're going to have a, a, a kind of like you're in the coach seats but they're private but with a bedroom, you have kind of like a living room atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and that's that's the big thing, obviously, is the space difference between the two. Um, in a roomette, so we've talked about the bedroom. Let's talk about the roomette. So in a roomette, um, you've, just, you've got two seats. And like you said, they're about the same size as the coach seats, but you're facing each other, and you have one really nice big window. And then, of course, you have the the bed up above which will fold down so you can both sleep in the room um, and basically just on a, I mean on a view liner view liner one you would have a, a little commode in the room with you but outside of that the only thing you're gonna get in a roomette is those two beds that's pretty much it yeah and you're going to have just less space for everything you have to be very economical with what you bring <laughs> in a roomette we basically Put our, in a super liner, you'll have luggage racks. You can put your big bags down below. In a view liner, you're probably going to need to check your big bags and just bring you know, a little duffel bag with your uh, food, any snacks you have, your toiletries, that kind of thing in with you because there's just not much room in there uh, for huge suitcases. In a view liner, you do have a little kind of cubby hole that you can put something in. But you still just don't have as much as a bedroom where you could bring more stuff if you wanted. Yeah, you could put your big suitcases in the bedroom with you on both the super liner and the view liner. And if you haven't seen our video of the room tour of every single room on Amtrak, make sure you check that out here on our channel. Uh, we've got all, every single room reviewed. Uh, tour of every single room. So do not miss that one. Make sure you check that out if you haven't seen that already. That will help you compare as you hear us talking about the difference between a super liner and a view liner and when you'll be on those. Yeah, so let's talk about price a little bit because that's another big factor. And for the most part, the bedrooms tend to come in about twice the price of a roomette, sometimes even more than twice the price. And for that reason, you're kind of getting the benefit during the day, but you're not getting the benefit during the night, you are getting that uh, 
bathroom that's kind of dedicated just for you. But in all honesty, I feel like we've had the bedroom several times. The shower, I'm not going to use that shower because it's, the shower and the toilet are the same. It's like a wet bathroom. So if you take a shower in there, the whole bathroom area is flooded with water. It is uh, tricky. And we're just not used to doing that effectively. And the shower in the bottom part of the train is much nicer and that's available to you. Uh, Amtrak showers are almost never taken. I've never even seen, we've done a lot of Amtrak rides, I would say. <laughs> I've never seen anyone use the shower except for me. So I don't know what that says about, about anything, but uh, there's just not going to be a line for the shower. You will have to go downstairs to use it, which is a little bit of an inconvenience, but the shower is actually bigger and better than in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, because it has a separate like dressing area and the shower, and the shower downstairs is probably like twice as large yeah, as the one that you have in in your bedroom it's it's a pretty tight space to be honest and even the the bathroom space is even smaller than the regular bathroom on yeah on Amtrak. that's the next thing i was going to get at is that if you are much bigger than us you know if you you know how big you are you can see how big we are if you're much bigger <laughs> than us you may not want to use the bathroom in an amtrak bedroom because they are tight and if you're like six foot four, you know, big person, you may want to seek out a different bathroom anyway. Uh, so I don't think that the, the bathroom, the private bathroom is really a good reason to get a bedroom. I also don't think that the uh, sleeping accommodations is another good reason to get a bedroom. Really the only reason to get a bedroom is if you really crave that extra moving around space during the day. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's actually one of the reasons why we booked it on uh, one big trip that we did. We did the Texas Eagle from California all the way to Chicago, mm -hmm. and th that's their longest trip on Amtrak, and we did that one in a bedroom. Of course, we didn't pay for it, though, did we? It was free because we used our points from our Amtrak Guest Rewards account. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> we generally don't book uh, bedrooms with cash because we just don't see as much value in that. Um, they are great, and if you're only gonna do this once, like if this is a once in a lifetime trip and you're watching this video to determine it, go for the bedroom. But if you're trying to plan like a five train trip route around the United States, I think most people can get away with a roomette, mm -hmm. but you do have to watch the videos and make sure that you can handle that tight space. Now another difference that you're gonna find between the roomette and the bedroom is that on the roomette, you're gonna be sleeping, traveling with the train direction. So uh, your head and feet will be in the direction of the train. In a bedroom, you'll be sleeping across the train. Uh, which one do you like better? I don't think I've ever asked you. <laughs> you know, I actually think it's, it's easier physically to sleep in the roomette because you can have your head either facing the direction of travel or not, depending on you know which way you go but I think it's harder to kind of control your body, especially if you're in the bottom bunk. In the top, you have that, you know, kind of seatbelt thing that holds you <laughs> in. But if you're on the bottom, if I get too close to the edge, I feel like I might rock out. Um, when we were in the bedroom a few times, I felt like I could, you know, roll right onto the floor. So as far as like, you know, so then I was like slightly awake because I was conscious of the fact that I could roll out of mm -hmm. the bed. So. Yeah, I actually like the room better for sleeping as well once you're asleep because for some reason I find it more soothing <laughs> to have my head and feet going in the same direction that I'm traveling versus perpendicular. I find that an odd sensation and I, I definitely have a little harder time sleeping in a bedroom than in a roomette, but it's not that much. Like it's not a deal breaker. I definitely will do it, but all this adds up to for us we almost always purchase a roomette because the other things are all the same too. You're getting the same uh, car attendant. In fact, your, your attendant will be the same whether you're in the roomette or the bedroom. You are getting uh, the same meals. You can have them delivered to your room no matter which one you're in. So it's all the same other than for us, that extra space you have during the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually in both, you have access to the lounge beforehand if there's a lounge at your station. So there's really 
there's really not a, a huge difference other than like you said the the space if you want a bigger amount of space which, which like we said is why we got it on the texas eagle we were going to be on it for so long we thought oh it'd be nice to have that extra space but yeah. we actually still ended up oftentimes going to the bathroom downstairs and showering downstairs because it was a much bigger shower and well there was nobody in it so yeah. now i will say if one of you or one or both of you are claustrophobic well you probably should just do the two room strategy but if you don't do that I think that the bedroom is better for people who don't like tight spaces because there is a smidge more room on the upper bunk in the uh, superliner bedroom than in the room at, which is, which is the only one that's really going to be a problem. The view liners, you're going to have plenty of space up there anyway. But in the bedroom, since you're going with the train across the train, the top where you're laying is kind of squared off. The ceiling is squared. But in a roomette, since you're going with the train and you're on the side, the ceiling curves with the train. And it definitely gives you a feeling like you're in an MRI tube, <laughs> like <laughs> half of an MRI tube. And that little bit of space where it curves and it doesn't square off, um, it definitely, you can notice it between the two. So it doesn't bother me at all. And that's why we choose the bedroom or the roomette. But if you really had someone who was like, that extra two inches is going to make, it could make a difference. The bedroom is a little less tight. <laughs> yeah, so I think this kind of gives you a better picture now of what the differences are between the two. If you're trying to choose because you do see the huge price difference between them, you're thinking, is it worth it to do the one over the other because it's so much more? This should kind of help you make a decision. Again, like Rob said, depends on the factors, like if this is a trip of a lifetime or you're only doing one, but if you're doing like three or four, you may not want to, you know, have that big expense. So this should kind of nail it down for you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave us your questions down below in the comments. We'll see you next time.